Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane. This video is part of my controller collection series, and today we're going to be talking about the Atari 7800, the Atari Jag, CDI, and the Commodore 64. Welcome back to my controller collection series, guys. Uh, like I said, I've got a bit of an addiction to having controllers for systems, and um, this time we're picking up right up or picking right up where we left off. And uh, again, this is just more some of the information that I can try to help give to you guys so that you can make educated decisions on what specifically that you're looking for, what not, what you're not looking for, uh, whether or not um, you would be happy with a controller that uh, you see on here or not. Um, with that, let's get on to the controllers. This is the Atari 7800 controller. It is a little bit different. It spins, but that doesn't really do anything. These originally come with dome switches in them, and it has back to the old style of connector again but the problem is that these dome switches are so fragile that uh, they are guaranteed to break eventually and so I've, I've already gone through and done what is called affectionately called the micro switch mod and now it clicks and these things con contact down on a micro switch that I've soldered onto the board um, it's really the only way to keep these things working, but, you know, it's it's fairly simple. There are actually two buttons and a four-way directional pad, but um, this is another one of the Atari controllers that has a lot of problems. This is the Atari JAG controller. It is a bit of a thing to handle. Um, it has, again, the 1 through 10... Or, you know, the number pad and everything like that. Um, it has some indents for fingers to rest so that you can, you know, hold it fairly well. Um, the the D-pad is at a weird angle, and this is a the three-button variant. There are six-button variants out there. Um, it has a very weird connector. This is, again, Atari breaking away from their normal thing. I have no idea why they did it that way. I guess it was just to to uh, make something different, um, but it's, you know, it's a fairly large controller. Um, people actually make fun of this a lot. I don't think it's that bad, but, um, you know, this is the only way that I can really play Alien vs. Predator on the Jag. CDI controllers. First of all, we will start off with one of the worst ones, which is this horrible thing that you uses IR to be able to do things. It's got a directional pad, it's got three buttons, and it has media buttons. The media buttons are really what this thing is mainly used for, because you can, you know, you can change tracks, you can use this thing as a fairly good CD player. Um, but it's, you know, this thing is not great to play games with, uh, especially with how sensitive the, the, uh, the IR is and how it needs to be done in a particular way. So with that we've got this guy. This is probably one of the most expensive controllers that I purchased off of eBay. Uh, I paid $80 for this silly thing and it's got a speed switch right here for slow and fast and then four face buttons and then a another switch up here which I forgot what it's for I think it's for uh, playing the thing either this way or this way which is really weird to me um, but it is kind of nice that they included it this uses a proprietary connection um, it is not a p2 connection it is not the Sega Genesis connection or anything like that it is uh, you know just what it is I mean it's its own thing. It's got a fairly long cord with it as well. Um, I also have this screw in place to have a stop to stop for a joystick, but you can take it out and put 
you know, put this back in there. You know, I, I plan on covering this with some plastic uh, later on or some finding something to thread on top of this and make this look a little bit better. My Commodore 64 controllers. First up is the Slick Stick. Um, now, these are pretty much uh, generic. They actually work on the Atari 2600 as well. It's got the same connector, uh, four-way button, and then a button right here. It's very stiff, very clicky on this one. Um, the next one is actually a lot more clicky. So this is the 500XJ Epix. You know, it is fairly nice. It fits in the hand very well so that, you know, you can sit there and play. As you can tell, this one is very clicky. Um, almost like it has arcade style controls. And then it's got the one switch right here. And again, this one is compatible with the Atari 2600. Um, I've actually used this quite a bit. This is probably my, my favorite aftermarket just because of the way that it fits in the hand. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.